Oh no, this is a note. This is from me to Jordan, so this is Jordan's stuff. That's the second one. Thank you. I invite you to stand as you're able. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Trinity of love, inviting us to abide in you. May we follow the spirit of truth through desert wild and city street, rutted field and snowbound height, battleground and market square, that your demanding love might speak to the heart of the manifold world through Jesus Christ, our brother. Amen. Are we? 
everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead hear what the spirit is saying to God's people A reading from the first letter of Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, 
in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the 
world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Happy Mother's Day, and thank you for being here. I needed a lot of airing out as uh, an adolescent boy. I may not have been the only one. So sometimes I would walk down to the beach. I grew up close to one. And sleep out there. Or try. But you know, even very brave, 15, 16, 17 year old boys lose all reason in the dark and sometimes sneak home when sounds are just like kind of scary. But one time, I was laying there. And out of nowhere came this dog that I had never seen before and that I have never seen since. Just kind of a wet, because it was a really light summer rain. Kind of smelly, husky looking dog. And it just laid down right next to me, like touching my body. I mean, how could you leave after that? And I fell asleep. And it was gone when I woke up in the morning. I don't know. But I wonder if maybe that advocate Jesus promised is a silent one. I wonder if the Holy Spirit is maybe a soft animal that stays with you in the dark. One that gives you courage. Maybe not the courage to fight. Maybe the courage to lie down in peace. Which is to say, to be vulnerable. Maybe the courage to sit still. let that be for a minute because I also really like the story about Paul in Athens and they might connect and they might not <laughs> but I think there's a kind of vulnerability for Paul he is a stranger at least the Paul of our imagination that the church has liked to lift up as this crusader right? who brings the might of the gospel to the very footsteps of empire in Rome, Paul the martyr, Paul the certain one, Paul the arguer. And here for a minute at least, he's kind of just a normal tourist, going around looking at the shrines and the monuments <laughs> and coming up with something sort of nice to say to his hosts. I see how religious you are in every and I wish we could just talk about the unknown God, because that is pretty cool. But it makes me wonder, 
are we a religious people? I mean, here we are, Western Washington, 2023. If you made like a word cloud, you know, of associated concepts with our place and time, I think religiosity would be like maybe seven or eight inches beyond the margin of that page. There's a lot of religiosity we could do without. But I think there is a part of our religion that has something to offer. Now, I know you've heard the demagogues, whether they're on cable TV or like the cubicle next to you. I know you've heard them say that the decline in religion is why we have so much moral decay, so much licentious decadence in our society, why people are so weak-willed now and not as good as they used to be. I don't know. I'm not a scholar, but the Middle Ages were one of the most religious times in human history and also most morally decadent, licentious, <laughs> depraved. I don't know if it made us better people or not. But I wonder if our religion does something to us. I'm going to try another dog story on. The mother of my children has heard this story before and might be tired of it by now. But one of my favorite teachers at seminary who taught pastoral care, she would tell this story about how she and her partner would have cocktail parties right, in their apartment. And it was like typical kind of awkward, you know, academic-y people trying to say something smart and stand the right way and do all the right things. And by the end of the party, they would find themselves in this awkwardly close circle in the middle of her living room. And finally, somebody would be like, why are we like touching each other right now? This isn't what, you know, good left brain type A people do. <laughs> and she would point to the Australian shepherd in the corner, panting and smiling, proud of its work. <laughs> because it would take all these strange, awkward people and just like nudge the way a herding dog does. Right? And push and maybe nip and beg until this stray mass of people was very vulnerable, very close, and very together. If we learn something here, It might hide in plain sight all the time, but we might learn to sit together. It's okay if you're the only person in your row. <laughs> it still counts, but I will tell you the eight o'clock service, everyone was in the front row. I think the Holy Spirit was nipping at some heels. Because we need, we need to be vulnerable to each other. Right? We live in this world that is obsessed with winning arguments. With, if not being right, being judged right. We live in this world that is afraid to love its enemies. And if loving sounds too hard, to at least sit still and be in the same place as our enemies. The epistle we heard says we always need to be ready to give an account of our hope. I don't think that means you need some biblical tracts lined up. 
to justify your Christian optimism in the face of all those cynical people out there. I think what it means is you need to have an answer to the question. How can you just sit there in the presence of your enemies? How can you just keep your door open when there is so much evil out there? How can you associate so freely with people who are morally questionable. And you're also learning an answer to that here. And the answer is not complicated. It's that you are not betting on judgment. You are betting on forgiveness. That is the account of my hope. I can't prove this to you. I can't justify myself. But I can say that I am counting on forgiveness. We're just people. We do scare easily. We have a really hard time being wrong. It's Mother's Day, and I barely made it out of the house at 7.30 without getting in an argument with my daughter, who is six. <laughs> Love is hard. But we need to hear the gospel again, and we need to hear what it says and what it doesn't say. It doesn't say, I will love you if you keep my commandments. It doesn't say, I will love you back if you love me well enough. It says, because I love you. And because I am in you. And even weirder than that, because I am in the person sitting next to you right now. And because the Holy Spirit, believe it or not, put you next to each other right now. You are loved. And you will mess it up. And you will not love well, and you will not love right. And you'll probably love the wrong people in the wrong ways. But the only account for your hope, the only thing to justify how you can sit with people without explanation, without defense, is that you are loved. One way or another, you were born of love. You were carried by a vulnerable human body. And a lot of different things happened a lot of different ways. <laughs> After that, and we don't all have the same story. Our mothers don't all have the same story. But it all started with the most vulnerable, most loving thing that can happen. Your body held by another. A body that gave a lot of itself for me, for you. We aren't loved because we're good. We don't love to be good. We are made good because we are loved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
to stand as you are able and together let us affirm the faith that has been handed down to us. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of all humanity. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman's womb, servant of the poor. He was tortured and nailed to a tree. Knowing full passion and deep sorrow, he died forsaken. <clears throat> On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will one day be known. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church. She is the spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of life everlasting. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask God, who will give you another advocate, to be with you forever. Risen Christ. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of God's praise to be heard. During this Easter season, God, we thank you for the blessings we've received. Risen Christ. In him we move and live and have our being. God be with all children and families. Comfort especially those in war, earthquakes, famine, and poverty. Risen Christ. God made the world and everything in it. God is Lord of heaven and earth. May we be mindful of God's gifts through nature. Risen Christ. Indeed, God is not far from each one of us. We offer prayers for those on our prayer list and all others who are suffering or have died. We pray for healing for Dee, Lisa, Judy, Katie, Tanner, Don, and Hillary. We pray for support for John, Ted and Judy, Martha, Paulette's family and friends, 
Gail, Joel, Kelsey, Bethany, Carice, and Gail's sisters. For Judy, Dusty, Marcus, and Nora. We offer prayers of peace for Alan, Paulette, and Philip. And we give thanks for the life of James, Ron, and Chris. Risen Christ, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by God, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And share a sign of God's peace with one another. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Terry. Peace, Cindy. Huh? Do you need a check? Welcome to Grace Church on this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sunny day that we have. I am so uh, grateful to see each of you here, whether you're joining us in person or uh, on Zoom. Um, you are welcome in this place. Uh, we turn now to the Liturgy of the Table, in which uh, all are welcome at Christ's Table. Um, we have a variety of ways to ensure that you can participate in this sacred meal. If you need alcohol-free wine, we have that. If you need uh, gluten-free um, wafers rather than bread, we have that. And then we have wine set aside that has not been touched by gluten if you need that as well. Um, so please make your way into the circle when we get to that part uh, in whatever way is most convenient for you. Um, and we would love to share this meal with you. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth humankind and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us stewards of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, and teach us to walk in your ways. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Santo, Santo, Santo. And so, Almighty God, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, said, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen light, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, almighty God, through Jesus Christ, our intercessor, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold who you are.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have set us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Amen. We turn now to that time in our service when we get to celebrate. Uh, if you have a birthday or an anniversary um, coming up this week, or you just have some news that you would like to share with uh, this, your community, I invite you to come forward now and do so. Come on up. <laughs> and I'm going to ask anyone on Zoom yet. Yes? No? Okay. All right. I'll start with you, Julie. Julie Tryout, two grandsons in the last couple of weeks, Max and Lou. Nice. It's birthdays. Birthdays, okay. Fourteen <laughs> <laughs> and nineteen. Oh. Wow. And Dave's uh, grandson, Cooper, is 17 on Tuesday. Wow. Well, okay. I'm coming and celebrating my stepdad's 87th birthday yesterday. 87th. All right. I'm Sarah celebrating my, my our son Willie's 32nd this uh, week. Okay. And our son-in-law Dustin's 36th this week. A couple days late. Okay. I'm Dorothy, and I'm just here to celebrate a revelation I had about Mother's Day. Ooh, there we go. Um, I found a card that was just a line drawing of a mother horse and a baby horse, and it made me realize that we need to thank our children. So to all you children, we mothers, thank you. You've taught us so much, namely patience. I've <laughs> <laughs> lived through a lot of crises. But that Mother's Day isn't just about us. It's about all the children in our lives that have made us mothers. Thank you. I didn't need to say it. My son turned four on Tuesday. Oh. Uh, daughter Kara turned 41 on the 5th of May. All right. Wonderful. Well, let us say a prayer and uh, then we'll get to celebrate with you. So, holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for all of those standing up here, whether they're celebrating their own milestones or on behalf of uh, a loved one. We give you thanks um, either way. Lord, we pray that you be with those who are turning another year older, that you would bless them uh, and through them uh, allow them to be a blessing to others. And we pray that you grant them many, many years. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God grant them many years. 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 Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love that we dance now. It's great. <laughs> yeah. uh, please stand uh, or remain standing for the blessing. May the living God remove the suffocating shroud that lies upon our world. May the risen Savior draw the sting of death, bringing all to life in him. And may the flowing spirit set us and all creation free and seal our hearts with faith. And the blessing of the one holy and undivided Trinity be with you and remain with you always.
my prop. Just a reminder for the men uh, at Grace, come to the men's group gathering, a spring gathering on the 22nd, Monday, a week from tomorrow. And uh, Robert Cromwell, I, I'm not here today, but he's making pasole, homemade pasole. So come enjoy and get together with the guys at Grace. 6.30 p.m. I just want to put out there that we are looking for many volunteers for camp um, July 24th through the 28th. You don't have to um, be super great with kids. We also need folks to help set up and clean up and make snacks and decorate and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So just be thinking of that. Thank you. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.